to share a message. Actually, it's a continuation of a message I shared on last night. But because not everyone was on our conference call last night, and now that we're bringing it live on Facebook, uh, you were certainly not there. The majority of you were not there. So now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to some of the things I said yesterday, and then I'm going to add on some new things uh, today. Praise God. Now, for those people who are watching on Facebook, the caption that they have now is, How they deceive you with a prophecy. How they deceive you with a prophecy or I have a word for you. Right? How people can use, quote, unquote, I have a word, or how they can use prophecy to deceive you. Bottom line, they tell you they have a word from God. And unfortunately, many people have been deceived by words, quote, unquote, from God. And so as I began to talk about this last night, I said there are four different types of people that will bring a word to you. Now, I'm sure there are more, but at least as I thought about it, I came up with four different types of people who are likely going to come to you and say to you, I have a word for you. The first group of people are those who actually truly hear from God. There are some people, they have a saving relationship with God. And I had to add saving, because not every relationship with God is a saving relationship with God. Pastor Femi, what are you talking about? I will explain. You see, the, the man on the street who don't know anything about God, you may find him saying, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. In his own mind, he has a relationship with God. The fact that on a daily basis, he probably thanks God for waking him up. So to him, that is a relationship with God. You have those also who they are doing maybe, you know, drug trafficking or, or many other illegal stuff. And they actually pray before they do it. Yes, there are people, they are about to do some drug trafficking, heavy, heavy drug trafficking they are about to make some millions of dollars from that thing. And they will actually say a prayer to Almighty God. At least in their mind, they are praying to Almighty God. So it's amazing that people, there are those who are prostituting, and they will literally pray that God, as I'm going out to prostitute today, please watch over me that nothing will be wrong with me. If you were to ask them, do you have a relationship with God? They will tell you yes. They will say, I pray every day so I have a relationship with God. I read the Bible every day so I have a relationship with God. It is possible to pray every day and to read the Bible every day and not be saved. So what you call a relationship with God may not be salvation. You talk to God, so you call it a relationship with God. But there's another type of relationship, which is salvation. In other words, now, your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are recognized. You are in the register. You know, I, I shared a story one time. I went to a micro center and, you know, you have to put your name on the register to go in. Thank God I found out early enough that, okay, I had to put my name. What about people who came in, sat there, sat in their cars, waiting, just hanging around, thinking that they will be called and they will never be called? Why? Their name is not added on the list. It's very possible that you pray every day and your name is not on the list. You can even fast and yet your name is not on the list. But that's diverting a little bit. I'm saying that there are some people who have a real saving relationship with God and they hear God. They have a real relationship with God and God talks to them. God speaks to them. Now, such people now can tell you something and say, the Lord said, and you can take it to the bank, the Lord really said that. They have a real relationship with the Lord that they are talking about. The Lord that they are talking about has a relationship with them. The, the, their name is known to God. Oh, that is so important as we are sharing this because the Bible makes us understand that there are those who may even work for God and don't know God. In Matthew chapter 7, it talks about 
He says, it is not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. You remember what we were saying? In other words, the ones who call the Lord, Lord, and say, Lord, today I thank you for waking me up this, this day. Literally, they do it on a daily basis. They call him Lord, and yet, the Bible says, they will not go to heaven. Then he goes on to say that some will say unto me in that day, some will say, but I cast out demons in your name. I heal in your name. I do this in your name. I do that in your name. And God will say to, say to them, I, but I don't know you. Depart from me. I never knew you. Wait, what do you mean by you never? You're saying you never? No, I never knew you because your name is not on the register. I never knew you. You're doing all these things for God. In your mind, you are in relationship with God. And yet the same God says, I don't know you. It's a serious thing. But there are some people, they know God for real. They have a relationship with God. They hear from God. And so they will tell you a word of prophecy that is truly from God. It is true. It is real. You can believe that. It is true. So that's the first category of people. The real folks. The real prophet. The real prophetess. The real child of God, the real Christian, the real saved person, the one that truly has a real relationship with God and truly hears God. That's the category number one. They are the good one. But guess what? There's another category of people that you're likely going to hear from. And they will tell you, I have a word from, for you. I have a word from God for you. That category is the, they are the ones who lie on God intentionally. There are people who use God's name intentionally to lie. Yes. And these people, they can be in church. They are liars and they are in church. Oh, beyond that. They are liars and they are clergy. They are liars and they have a title. They have a title of a pastor. They have a title of a bishop, of an archbishop. Of an apostle, of a chief apostle, you know, name it, they have it. Evangelists, all kinds of stuff. They have it all. They have all the titles. And yet, they will intentionally use the name of God to tell a lie. Oh, I want you to know that there are liars in church. And of course, some of you have come to find out that out. I was listening to a woman of God on Facebook earlier, and, and, and she was talking about how. You know, people have told lies. They've told lies to her about God. <laughs> you know, and how they will prophesy this and prophesy that. And the prophecy they are giving to her, they are lower than what God has said to her. In other words, God said, I'm giving you a three-car garage. And they're telling her that God is, God is giving you a one-car garage. Like, hello, that's not true. God told me three-car. Where did you get your message from? There are those who lie on God. I will never forget a lady prophetess who came to my church and and uh, I saw how gifted she was. I saw how uh, how much of an asset she could be in, in the kingdom of God. And I said to her, I said, hey, woman of God, will you consider, you know, doing some work together with me? I said, will you consider, will you pray about it? See how God is leading you. And she said something to me. She said, Pastor Femi, you are the only one among all the other people. You are the only one who did not tell me god said you said i should pray about it think about it see how god will lead me she said to me she said pastor i have been to four different churches and in all four churches they all said god said i should join them i said wow four different churches so imagine you visit the church number one they see your gift the pastor comes up to you and says, woman of God, the Lord said you should join our church. Then she goes to the next one. The pastor said, the Lord said you should join our church. Goes to the next one. There was a visiting prophet in town. The visiting prophet said, the Lord said you should join this church. And then fourth church again. The Lord said you should join our church. So how many churches is one woman going to join? Because the Lord is telling her everywhere she goes to join. But I did not say the Lord said. Can I tell you something about me? Maybe you don't know that. I will really tell you the Lord said. 
nothing against those who are saying it. If they know the God like that, you know, maybe me, I'm on a lower level or something like that. But I don't play with that. I, do, I just don't. I don't. I don't. I just don't. I'm not going to use the Lord's name on anything. If, if I tell you the Lord says something, you can take that to the bank, the Lord told me. If I take this pastor right here, I told that the Lord said, the Lord really said. I'm not one of those. I'm not crazy about oh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Just shut up. Enough already. So many people claiming the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. And they're just simply lying on God. Intentionally lying on God. I will never forget Ananias and Sapphira in the Bible. Acts chapter 5. They sold a piece of land. They sold it for a certain amount of money. They brought part of the money to church. Peter asked, is this how much you sold it for? And Ananias said, yes, this is how much we sold it for. Why are you lying? You could have just simply said, Peter, we sold it for a higher amount, but we decided that we're going to give part of it to the church. So simple. But no, some people want to lie to impress people. Some people want to lie for whatever other reasons. So Ananias lied. And Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, knew by the Holy Ghost that you have just lied. And Peter said, well, guess what? Some people are about to carry your dead body now. And Ananias fell down and died. Sapphira came in too. And Peter asked, hey, is that how much you sold the land for? Sapphira decided to tell a lie too. And guess what? She fell down too and died. The same people that carried the body of her husband carried her own body out. People in church who will lie. Oh, there are ministers who like to lie. They love to impress as if they work for people. I don't work for you. I don't need to impress you. Praise God that he's using you to do bigger things. Hallelujah. We're all working for the kingdom of God. But you know, sometimes pastors, leaders, they want to lie. They will lie that 50 people were there when it was just five people. They will lie that they made this amount of money when they actually really made little money. They will lie. They just want to. They want to show off. They want to impress someone. So they will lie ah, about people who just want to take advantage of you. They know that if they told you the uh, that if they told you that this and this and that, you are not going to comply. You have enough sense. So in order to 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 take advantage of you, they will use the name of the Lord. They will come and say something like, "The Lord said, you should sow." five thousand dollars into my ministry and actually the lord did not say that they wanted five thousand dollars they needed five thousand dollars to pay a bill they needed five thousand dollars to buy a car they needed five thousand dollars to do something they know that if they say hey people i need five thousand dollars maybe they won't listen to them maybe they won't help them out maybe they won't give them the money so they decide that you know what let me lie because there's always some people who will just believe. Whenever I say the Lord said, they will believe it. So they will tell a lie. Intentionally lying on God. Can I tell you something? Those of you who are watching me, there are prophets who come from Africa. If not because of this coronavirus right now, they, they will start arriving, some of them by this time, some of them in June, some of them in July. They come into America to rack up. They come into America to make lots of money. Now, there are real prophets, and there are real prophets who also have real needs. And of course, we should help meet those needs. I'm not knocking that in any way. A genuine man of God, a genuine woman of God, who is doing the work of the ministry, we should sow to support. We should help them out. We should help to do whatever God has committed into their hands. I'm not knocking that in any way. However, there are those who come for the purpose of, I'm going to America. I'm going to make $100,000 this summer. So, that's their goal. So, they start going from church to church and telling lies. They'll prophesy, and it's lies they're prophesying. Usually, some of them are actually seers. In other words, they see. They see you for real. They could tell which country you were born at. 
what happened to you. They will tell you stuff going on in your life. And you say, wow, this man, this woman is right on target, right on point. You are saying exactly how it is. But then now, this is where they add their own lie to it. They've seen something for you, for you. Then they will add a lie and they will say, hey, woman of God, the Lord is telling me that you should buy me a car. Now, they know that you have the money. So they will now lie on God to get a car out of you. Be very careful. So that's the second category of people, the liars. They lie intentionally on God. They may come to you and tell a lie and say, God said you should marry me. <laughs> God said you should marry me. Now, ordinarily, they know that you are not going to say yes to them. Maybe they're not even your type. So they have to lie on God now. So they come and they say, God said you should marry me. And so if you don't know any better, you believe that God has really spoken to them and uh, you go marry them. And that's the beginning of your trouble. I said category number one are people they truly hear from God. Category number two are people who lie on God. Category number three are people who were actually deceived themselves. For some reason, they are deceived. So, in other words, maybe they heard something, they heard a voice, and they mistake that voice to be the voice of God. They did not intentionally come and lie to you. They have no intention to lie to you, but they really believed wrong. They were sincerely wrong. Now, some of these people could be saved people. Somehow, they were sincerely wrong. Some of them are unsaved people who think that that dream they had was a prophecy from God. Who thought that the voice they heard was actually a voice from God. They're not trying to lie to you, but they were deceived. It's not a message from God, but not because they intentionally want to lie to you. They were deceived. You know, it reminds me of Saul. Saul who turned Paul, Paul the Apostle. When Saul was persecuting the Christians, he thought he was doing it for God. He was literally persecuting Christians, probably killing them, you know, whatever they're doing to them. He thought he was doing it for God. There are people sometimes who think they, were, they are speaking for God. They will give you a message and they are not trying to deceive you. They actually believe that that is from God and it is not. But just imagine that your own life the jeopardy that your own life can be in, you are blind. And another blind person who thinks they know the way. Imagine maybe somebody who's totally blind, another person who is half blind or who's just using a cane to kind of move around, who thinks that they know the way and they're saying, come along, come along, come along. And before you, they're not trying to kill you. They're not trying to harm you. They are sincerely trying to guide you. But unfortunately, they themselves cannot see properly. And so you follow them, you follow them. The next thing you know, both of you fall into a ditch. Uh, the blind leading the blind. This category of people are usually very immature. They are, not, they are not grounded in God yet. They are not mature in God yet. Can I say something to you? I know you want to follow somebody. Stop following immature people. Stop following those who just got saved last week. They don't know their left from their right. And now you want them to guide your life. The Bible calls them novice. Why are you letting novice guide your life? They will lead you wrong. They are still trying to experiment with life, if you will. They're still trying to understand the voice of God. Somebody who doesn't understand the voice of God, they are, it's still like a hit and miss kind of a thing. Is it God? Okay, they, they think it's God, then they now find out it's not God, and you are following them. So they will be experimenting with your life. One day they will say, go over there. It is God. God has spoken. Now they realize, oh my God, it's not God. Or maybe you may realize it's not God. And then you are playing that kind of a thing with your life. No, 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 no. That's not wise to do. If they are still babies in Christ, let them grow. Give them room to grow. This is not the time to be following them. They are immature. So there are people who are not trying to deceive you, but they are sincerely wrong. And then I want to add the fourth category. The fourth category are people who are mentally sick. Oh, wow, pastor, really? Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. People of God, I want you to know that there are some people out there, when they are mentioning God, 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 it's not because they are that close to God. It's because they are actually mentally sick. 
I'm going to let that sink in a little bit. You see, I've been doing this work for a minute, 30 years in ministry. I know a thing or two. Now, I don't, I don't do all the fancy and all that kind of stuff, but I know a thing or two. And by God's grace, I'm well exposed. I'm not one of those that just hang around the little you know, group of people. I'm, I'm exposed. I, I go around. Some of you follow me on Facebook. You've seen that. You see, there are people who are mentally sick. And if you don't know how to know the symptoms, you will think that, that the fact that they are mentioning God and saying Jesus, that they are actually really that close to Jesus, not knowing that it's their mental sickness that is talking. Let me tell you something about mental sickness that you may not know. If you were passionate about sports before you become mentally sick, there's a tendency that after you became mentally sick that you'll be talking sports, 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 you know, all the time, all the time, all the time. And somebody will hear you like, why are you talking about sports to yourself? You're even talking about NBA. You're walking down the street. You're not on your phone. You're not talking to nobody. And you're saying, yes, yes. They may even be describing the, the play. Yes. Uh -uh. Throw the ball. Throw the ball. Yes. 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 Block him. Block him. Block him. Yes. Pass it. Pass the ball. And you're wondering, who, who are you talking to? That man, that woman is mentally sick. And they are talking about sports because that's what they were really passionate about before they became sick. Same thing. It could be they are into science. And now that they are mentally sick, they'll be talking science. They'll be, they'll be talking about the molecules, the neutrons, the electrons, and the this and the that. You're wondering, why are you saying all those things? Well, they are mentally sick. And the things that they were passionate about before they became sick is what they are expressing. So that leads me to the next one. There are people, before they became sick mentally, they were passionate about the things of God. And now that they are mentally sick, that passion about the things of God is coming out through their mental sickness. So you may hear them saying, God, 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 God. And you are wondering, wow. Now, just imagine that. The one who is mentally sick. By the way, it's not all mental sick, mentally sick people that will, that will be in that extreme. But when you pay, pay close attention to the one who's giving you prophecy, or the one who's saying, God said, God said, God said, and you watch, sometimes you can see you, you are mentally sick. But unfortunately, because many people are ignorant, they follow the mentally sick person. They don't know any better themselves. I've shown you four different types of people that may come to you and say, I have a word. Now, if you want to listen to the full thing, go and listen to the conference call I did last night. I share in details, but I cannot do that again tonight. Let me move on. Now, what do you do if anybody brings you a word? I have a word for, for you, or this is a prophecy for you. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, test all things. Test all things. Then it goes on in 1 John chapter 4. You can read from verse 1 to 6. It says, test every spirit. Test every spirit. In other words, just because they are coming in the name of God does not mean they are of God. As a matter of fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 and 15, we see how Satan disguises as an angel of light. And the same way he does, that's the same way his apostles, the Bible talks about false apostles, right? False prophets. That's the way they do. They will disguise as an angel of light. That is why it is so necessary that when you hear any word, any word is given to you, test all things, test every spirit. But in addition to that, not only do you test every spirit, in other words, you are praying to God and you're saying, God, is this really of God or not? You're praying about it. Lord, is this really of God or not? Don't just godly believe just anything that people say to you. Test every spirit. Pray about it. God, what are you saying? Show me, show me, show me. Now, Let's be realistic. Some of you, you are still a baby in Christ. You don't have that kind of relationship like that, where God can show you this and God will show you that. You are still kind of learning how to hear from God and how to see from God. So, if that's your case, then go to somebody who is mature in the Lord and say, Sister, this is what this prophet said to me. Please help me judge this thing. This is what this prophet has said to me. Please help me judge this thing. This is what this sister in Christ said to me or this brother in Christ, or just anybody said to me, help me to judge this thing. 
So if you know you don't know how to really judge this thing, how to really test the spirit, then talk to someone who's more mature who could kind of guide you in the process. They could pray along to check, to make sure that this is of God or not. You know, there are people in my church who have come to me and said, Pastor, you know, I, the, you know, the Lord told me something. And I say, okay, let, let's hear what the Lord told you. By the time they finish telling me what the Lord has told them, I will just say, the Lord did not tell you that. What? No, he doesn't say those kind of stuff. Then I show them scripturally, and then they see. So their mind, in their mind, they are thinking something. They're not trying to lie on God. It's just that their immaturity, they don't know God's word like that. They don't know God enough like that. So they are deceived. They are the thought category I talked about. So they just thought, they have a thought. Now, I had to actually say to somebody, I said, okay, you have a brain, you're a human being, you have a brain, and we use our brain to think. There are thoughts that can come to, you, to your mind. You could think of something. When you think of something, that's not necessarily God telling you. You can think. We have a brain. That's we are, why we think, right? It is not necessarily God telling you anything. You are just thinking. So, you, just like you may remember something all of a sudden, is that God no, that's not God. We have a brain. That's why he gave us a brain. We can remember things. We can think things. And thoughts can come to our mind. So not every single thought you think throughout the day. Oh, God has spoken again. God has spoken again. Hello, you are just thinking. You have a brain. That's why you, you have, God gave you one. And you use that brain to think. So anytime you come up with a thought, it is not always God talking. It's just you using your brain to think something. So we have to be very careful because some of us, maybe somehow, we have erroneously been taught that every thought, every thought, every thought, that's God talking, God talking. And then you start telling people, oh, God told me this, God told me. No, something came to your mind. There are many ideas that have come to my mind. It's not God telling me all of them. As a matter of fact, some of them, when you bring it before God, God will say, don't do that one. But this idea came to my mind. Well, it came to your mind, but it's not from God. So let's be careful about that. Test every spirit. But the next thing that is so important for you to do is that you need to check their fruit. You need to check their fruit. The one who's telling you something. Oh, I have a word from God. I have a word of prophecy for you. Please, for goodness sake, check their fruit. What kind of fruit do they bear? In other words, check their lifestyle. What kind of life are they living? I remember somebody who gave a word to a member of my church and said, God said, I'm to marry you. I am the one to marry you. And I said, no, God didn't say it. God didn't say it. First of all, your lifestyle has nothing to do with someone who knows God. So how all of a sudden, and how come God did not tell you to stop doing all these things that you are doing? All this lifestyle that is against God. God never told you to stop those, those ones. But all of a sudden, you found a woman that you want to marry. You desire to marry the woman. Now, all of a sudden, God is talking to you. So God didn't talk to you all this while, but now he's talking to you when you want something. No, God did not speak. It is a lie. Check their fruit. I love what a friend of mine said. He said, okay, let those who are saying God said this, God said that, when they want what they want, let them show us an example of when God spoke to them about things that are inconvenient and they obeyed God. I said, wow, Bishop. That's correct. You, you telling me God said, I should do this, I should do that. Things that will benefit you. How come that same God never told you about your lifestyle that is not pleasing to him? He never spoke to you. But all of a sudden, you can hear his voice telling you this thing that you want. He's not the one talking. You are the one talking. You're lying. Check their fruits. Before you believe, before you follow, check their fruits. What's their lifestyle like? Don't be fooled by God said this, God said that. You know, people who are immature in God are the ones that are, that are fooled by those kind of stuff. Can you just imagine now you coming to me and telling me, God said this, God said that. It doesn't impress me. Check their fruit. Check their fruit. Check their lifestyle. Check the kind of life they live. Do they live like someone who actually really knows God? Or do they live like someone who don't know God? All of a sudden, God is talking to you, but you don't, your lifestyle don't show God. Check their fruit. If their fruit is wrong, reject the message. Oh, can I say something to you? Don't be afraid to reject the message. Don't be. 
Oh, but somebody said, God has said, if I say no, I reject that. God is going to punish me. God, God is not going to punish you. Don't let anybody lord it over you. God is not punishing you. As a matter of fact, God will love the fact that you are testing the spirit. God will love the fact that you are coming back to him and you are saying, God, is this you? I need a proof that this is you talking. God will love that because he has said to us in his word that we should do just that. So don't be afraid. Oh, but they said, God said, if I don't do it, God is going to strike me dead. No, you will not die. God knows why you are not doing it. If it is him talking in the first place. Check their fruit. The next thing, check their track record. You are about to put your life in the hand of a man. You are about to put your life in the hand of a woman. You better check their the track record. They are about to tell you that God said you should move from New York and go to California. <laughs> you better check their track record. Before you follow somebody, you better check their track record. They are telling you that, oh, God said you should marry this woman. <laughs> And you too, you're about to do it. You better check the track record before they derail your entire life. And then when you get to find out, you want to blame God. And God will say, why are you blaming me? I told you to test every spirit. You did not test. Oh, but they said, they, they said you said. You, they said you said. You said I should marry her. They said, you, oh, no, 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 no. Why are you following what they said? Why didn't you check with me to know from me that I said that? So if you follow them, it's on you now. It's not on God. Don't be getting mad on God for what God didn't say. He said, but the prophet said that. Well, you should have tested. You should have checked their fruit. You should have checked their track record. This is someone who have a habit of saying, saying, you know that, you see, <laughs> let me show you something about church. In the scientific world, they prove everything. For example, there are people who are trying to, to to, I think I saw in the news the other day that they came up with some kind of vaccine and it, it was made here in the US and they are testing it right now. They're going to test it in Australia or someplace like that. They're going to test this thing. In the scientific world, they test things. They prove things. They, they, they test it to make sure that it is real, it is true. Now, there are some products, right, that you cannot sell or it will be rejected if you go to the World Health Organization, for example, or the FDA, and you make claims that this product can cure cancer, this product can cure uh, HIV, this product can cure diabetes, you can claim whatever you want to claim. They need proof. They need proof. And so they will reject products because there is no proof. You have not tested it. You have not taken it and, and given it to humans or, or sometimes you try it on animals first, make sure it works, and then you put it on humans. There is no test. Now, in church, oh my God, in church, there is no test. In church, in many churches today, people can say whatever they want to say. They can say, I prophesy this. No test. How do we know that the prophecy you said last week actually came to pass? I prophesy that. People just be running their mouth everywhere, running their mouth. You see a lot of them on Facebook, running their mouth. The Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord is always saying.